This video is part C on our introduction to mesh current analysis. Um, here is the circuit that we have considered in the past two videos. And in the first video, we set up the equations for these three mesh currents. And we found it to be equal to, or we got this expression, these three equations here. So we derive three equations using the mesh current technique and now we have three unknowns that we wanted to solve for. Current 1, current 2, and current 3 and we have three equations to use to solve for these three currents. And our next step was this we could call a matrix. Then we use these column numbers here, here, and here to form this determinant. And we determine that this had a numerical value of 39. Now, and sometimes this right here is called the resistance matrix. Now, with this information in hand, that put us in a position to solve for I1, I2, and I3. And in the last video, we saw for I1 and I2. And we form these two matrices to determine I1 and I2. And now we're about to determine the uh, value for current I3. And the way that we form these two matrices. Here we wanted to determine the value of I1. So actually these are determinants now. We went back to this matrix and the coefficients, these column coefficients for um, I1, replace it with these numbers, which we have right here. And then these column numbers and these column numbers stay the same. And then to determine current I2, well, let's go back to here. Then we replace these column numbers with these column numbers. And that's what we have shown right here. This column and this column remains unchanged. Now we're about to determine the numerical value for current I3. And what we do is we go back to our original matrix here, these equations essentially, and this column of numbers now gets replaced with this column of numbers to determine the numerical value of I3. These two columns are unchanged. So here then is the setup to determine uh, current I3. You see here we have 106 and the first two columns now remain unchanged. And in each case we're dividing by 39. And again 39 was the numerical value of this determinant which we obtained from this 3 by 3 matrix here. So let's go ahead and see if we can determine what current I3 is. And again, this was our original circuit that we began with. So here is the expression for current I3. And again, it's the same story. We have this expanded by minors. Nothing new here, really. Divided by 39. Now it's going to be 3 times this submatrix where we cover up the column that 3 appears in, cover up the row that 3 appears in, and we have this subdeterminant 6 minus 3, 0, 6. But when we do our cross multiplication, here we have 36 minus 0. So here it's just 3 times 
36. Then it's minus this number, which already has a minus sign by it, so this becomes now plus 1 times this submatrix. Now we cover up that row, cover up this column, and we have this subdeterminant, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 6. So we have negative 1, negative 2, 0, and plus 6. And then we have plus this coefficient, 1, times this subdeterminant. Cover up this column, cover up the first row, and we have negative 1, negative 2, 6, negative 3. Okay, so we should be able to figure this out pretty quickly now. I sub 3 will equal, let's see what this subdeterminant is. Here we have negative 6 minus 0. So this has a numerical value of minus 6. Try to keep things in focus. Then here we have 3 minus negative 12. That would be 3 plus 12. So this would have a numerical value of 15. And again, here we have, that's plus 3 minus negative 12. That would be 3 plus 12. So that gives it a numerical value of 15. So here we have 3 times 36 minus 6 plus 1 times 15 divided by 39. And 3 times 36, that is 108 minus 6 plus 15 is plus 9 divided by 39 so we have I3 is equal to 117 divided by 39. That equals plus 3 amps. So we can go back to here. I3 equals plus 3 amps. Now, let's go back and look at our original circuit. Before we do that, let's, we don't need this anymore. So let's get rid of this. Okay, here's the original circuit. And we have now determined that I1 is 3 amps, is plus 3 amps, I2 is plus 2 amps, and I3 is plus 3 amps. Okay, so let's see. Try to get everything in focus at once. So the amount of current going through this resistor is just I2, which is plus 2 amps. The amount of current going through this resistor is I3, which is plus 3 amps. The amount of current going through this resistor here we have 
I1 at 3 amps in this direction and here we have I2 going up in this direction with 2 amps so the net current through this resistor will be 1 amp going in this direction and for this resistor here we have I1 at 3 amps here we have I3 at 3 amps take the difference between them and there is no current at all in this resistor so that's it that finishes the problem finally um, it's can be a long uh, procedure but again it's a very powerful one here we had a circuit that has at least four or five nodes and several branches and two different voltage sources but we were able to determine then um, what the current was through each element of the circuit so that's sort of a uh, brief outline actually and presentation of the mesh current analysis and we tried to choose an interesting example to uh, introduce it with and it takes a while it takes practice so come back join us for some more videos and we'll continue practicing with our mesh current analysis and we'll try and solve some more problems